All right, Alexander, let's do an update as to what is happening in, uh, in Ukraine at the moment. Uh, Siversk is about to be surrounded or is surrounded. Uh, Zeluzhny is urging uh, Zelensky to, to get out of there. We have the announcement of uh, uh, Kleschevka, which has, uh, according to sources at Wagner, with, with the Wagner uh, PMCs, they claim that they have uh, full control of uh, Kleschevka, which is an important settlement, which puts the Russian military closer to an encirclement of Bakhmut. We have, uh, what else do we have? We have the, uh, gosh, we, we could talk about the helicopter accident, but I don't think there's yeah. much, I, I don't know if there's yeah. really much to talk about there. We have the European Parliament, they're saying that they're opening up, uh, they passed a resolution for the creation of an international tribunal for Putin and Lukashenko. Uh, we have speeches from Putin, we have speeches from Lavrov. Uh, we have uh, meetings in Belarus as well. I believe Shoigu has also called the uh, the Belarus foreign ministers. There's, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Um, not sure which one's the most important. <laughs> I well, I, 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 where, where I, do you I want to begin? I'm going to start with the military situation on the battlefields because it seems to me ultimately that's the place of decision. And first of all, I think that we can take it this time that all those rumours and claims about uh, Zaluzhny advising Zelensky to pull troops out of Siversk is true. It's coming now from multiple sources, all of them Ukrainian. I, I would have thought that if it wasn't true, we'd have had some kind of denial by now. And the facts on the ground seem to show that that is indeed the correct or logical or obvious thing to do. I mean, the Russians have now, or at least the Wagner organization, has now not just captured Solidar. Note, by the way, that Zelensky continues to deny that. He continues to pretend that Solidar is under Ukrainian control, which is incredible. But there's been no Ukrainian admission that Solidar has been captured by the Russians. At least no official Ukrainian admission that Solidar has been captured by the Russians, even though everybody knows it has been. But Solidar has been captured. The Russians control the main road from Bakhmut to Siversk. They're capturing a whole string of settlements, uh, one by one, ever closer to, to Siversk. The roads to Siversk are now threatened with being cut off as well. The Ukrainian forces in Siversk have the Siversky Donetsk River at their back. So, you know, that's also going to be a problem for them. So it makes complete sense for the Ukrainians to pull their troops out of Siversk fast. And if they don't, they'll be surrounded and encircled and they'll be in what the Russians call a cauldron or a boiler. And typically and characteristically, Zelensky doesn't want to do it. He wants to hold on at Siversk, regardless of cost, regardless of losses. We'll see whether in the end Zelensky is able to prevail with him. And the other news, I think, is every bit as important. Uh, Prigozhin himself, the head of the Wagner organization, has now come out and said that Klosheyevka, this village to the southeast of Bakhmut, has indeed been captured. And I don't think we can doubt that either. I mean, when Prigozhin says it, it's nearly always... I mean, I, I've never known him to say something like that, which wasn't true. So we can assume that that place has been captured. And we were getting reports that Ivanovka which allies another village which is to the west of Kleshayevka and which is right on you know top of the main road leading into Bakhmut from the west that that is being contested as well so it looks as if the pincers are closing around Bakhmut and doing so fast so it's not just a crisis in Siversk it's a crisis in Bakhmut Ukrainian troops, numbers of Ukrainian troops in Siversk, probably not great, but large numbers of Ukrainian troops in Bakhmut. It's an operational crisis, and Zelensky's in denial. He won't even accept that Solidar is lost. He's not 
accepting retreats from Siversk. He's still apparently trying to reinforce and counterattack in Bakhmut. And uh, you said in a video we did a couple of about a week, 10 days ago, when Zelensky gave an interview to the French media that he looked like he was losing touch with reality. Well, with every single hour, we see how that is affecting the position of Ukrainian soldiers on the ground. So it's an operational crisis for Ukraine and Donbass, a deteriorating situation. And I mean, that's, I think, all we can say about the battlefields, but it is very consequential. Now, turning to other things, I am not going to say very much about this helicopter crash in Ukraine. I don't think we have any real information. It is extraordinary that not just the interior minister, the man in charge of the police and internal security forces in Ukraine, but his entire top team were in this helicopter. I mean, that seems to me most extraordinary, given that a war is going on. But anyway, they were. There's lots of rumours, theories, speculations as to why that happened. Officially, it was pilot error. Others are saying that it was a missile strike. Um, pro uh, nobody seems to be clear who, however, launched that missile or why it was done, whether it was an accident, whether it was deliberate, whether it was an assassination attempt. In other words, if it was an assassination attempt, why it would, would have happened. I just don't think we have anywhere near enough information to be able to say one way or the other. So other than the fact that an important member of Ukraine's government has just been killed and that uh, you know the top of, the top officials of the interior ministry have been killed as well and that this comes directly after Zelensky's primary spin doctor um, Alexei Arostovich has been sacked. <laughs> other than well, other than that, I don't think we can say much more about it. In some ways, I actually think Arostovich's dismissal is the more important event because I come back to your point about Zelensky losing touch with reality. The way that happened, I, I got the sense that Arostovich wanted to go because he's starting to understand that his boss, Zelensky, just really isn't on top of things anymore. That says a lot. If, if Aristovich thinks that Zelensky is losing his mind, Aristovich is, is, is a pretty, pretty out there guy. So that says a lot. But um, I, I'll tell you why. Uh, outside the fact, okay, they're trying to memory hole all of Solidar and Donbass. I'll tell you why the uh, Elensky is doubling down in uh, Siversk, in in, um, in Bakhmut, and all these places is because he has all of these uh, WEF uh, speeches to give. <laughs> That's they, totally they, right. They, they, these these yeah. people, it's true. No, these people are so concerned. No, no, no. And when I mean these people, I don't, I don't only mean Elensky. I mean. NATO and uh, and Vander Crazy, all of them. You have the big uh, meeting in uh, in Germany taking place. Lloyd Austin arrived in Germany, so you may want to talk about that because every country now is just they're just giving all their weapons. They're just saying, okay, we're going to give all our weapons. You know, Canada and uh, Netherlands and uh, Estonia. They're bra Estonia's bragging about it. To so look at all the weapons that we're giving to Ukraine, and we have no more weapons left for ourselves. But hey, look at us. Uh, but the reason he's doing it is is because the reason he's not, uh, he's doubling and tripling, quadrupling down in Bakhmut and he's memory holing the uh, the catastrophe in the Donbass is because he has this big WEF speech to give and he gave it. And just an example as to how much he's losing his mind. This is from the Kiev Independent. Zelensky says he's not sure Putin is still alive. President Volodymyr Zelensky said that he was not entirely sure that Russian President Vladimir Putin is alive, is still alive, and makes decisions in Russia. This is what he said during his speech at Davos today, January 19th. Quote, I don't quite understand who to talk to and about what. I'm not sure that Russia's president, who sometimes appears against the chroma key, is really him. Zelensky responded when asked about the possibility of peace talks. So pure projection, because we all know that it's Zelensky that's been on green screens multiple, multiple times. They put out videos in a documentary uh, as to how they, they shoot uh, Elensky's uh, video messages. I mean, a documentary has, has been put out on that. 
pure projection, but uh, he, he is. I think all yeah. of them are losing their mind. Yeah. 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 And, and their only answer, their solution to all of this, to this mass uh, psychosis, this mass going crazy thing that they've got going on, is more and more weapons. That's it. Weapons. Just well, I- everything. <laughs> You have Germany, and, you, and we have the tank story now again. Germany is telling the U.S., we'll send our leopards if you send your Abrams. And, and just uh, the U.S. is saying that they're going to help, uh, that, that they're going to help Ukraine target Crimea. And the Biden White House is, is thinking about sending uh, weapons to target Crimea as well. This is from the New York Times as well. Just basically, they're, they're all losing their freaking minds. Uh, I, look, you've you've left me with very little to say, Alex, because I completely agree with you. I mean, it, it is a general flight from reality. Can I just just deal quickly with Aristovich? Because you know the the point of Aristovich is that he's a spinner of fables, but he, the reason he does it and has done it quite well, actually. I I have more. I, I mean, to be very clear, I've got more respect for him as a skilled liar, if you like, than some people do. But the fact is, he's able to do it as well as he has done, because he has some grasp of reality. And he did something really, in the face of this gathering flight from reality, he did something which was completely unacceptable. He said, he said, something that was almost certainly true. He said this missile that struck this building in Dnepro. It was not a Russian missile targeted at this building at Dnepro. It was something that our own air defense was responsible for. Now, that's a glimmer of reality. And I can't help but think that Aristovich did that on purpose because he's trying to find a way out because he knows that he's in the middle of a lunatic asylum and he wants to find some way of escaping it. I, I think this is, this is, that was the impression I got. And, you know, he's given more interviews since then. And that's my feeling because you're absolutely correct. It is a complete flight from reality. I mean, I, it's difficult to know where to start, but let's start with Putin and, you know, Putin being dead. Putin yesterday visited a big industrial factory in St. Petersburg which is the Obuchov plant, which is the one that produces, one of the plants that produces air defense missiles. It's a very old plant. So there he was, and he was talking with whom? He was talking with factory workers. <laughs> I mean, he was there actually talking with factory workers. He was talking about social security issues, pensions, uh, future investment programs, um, possible indexation of wages for defense industry workers, He's talking about those sort of things. And he was interacting with the workers in the factory, dealing with their problems. Some of them brought up topics like kindergartens and things like that. It was obviously Putin. And that was yesterday. Even as Zelensky, you know, is coming along saying, you know, Putin might be dead. Putin also had a meeting, by the way, with um, war veterans in St. Petersburg who survived the siege of Leningrad, one of the most harrowing events of the Second World War, one that doesn't get enough attention in the West. But anyway, we won't talk about that now. The point was, again, it was obviously Putin. Putin meeting people, not officials, not members of the government, not ministers, uh, not appearing in front of green screens. Putin hardly ever appears in front of green screens. In fact, I don't remember him ever doing so. So you're absolutely right when you talk about projection. It's actually Putin engaging with factory workers, war veterans, real people, in other words. So you have at the same time Zelensky coming along with these fantastic, fantastic things. And obviously he is at the extreme end of this flight from reality. And you're absolutely right. He can't accept that Solidar's fallen. He can't accept that Siversk has fallen. He can't accept that Bakhmut has fallen. He's in denial about all of these things. He won't listen to what his defense chief, Zeluzhny, is saying. And as I said, the accumulation of reports now that Zeluzhny is telling him, for God's sake, get the troops out of Siversk. They're going to be trapped in a few, it might be a case of hours rather than days, but Zelensky doesn't know that because that doesn't, accord with the fantasy world that he's spinning. But you're quite right. All of the others are also now swept along by this um, fantasy stuff. So 
they're all talking, they're all talking in Davos, you know, that the way to peace is through victory over Russia. <laughs> Even as everything in Ukraine is 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 falling apart. Um, they're all talking, as you correctly say, about rushing all these tanks and machines to Ukraine. There's talks now about, you know, sending missiles to Ukraine that can strike Crimea. All of these things. The military in Germany and in the United States, by the way, are now clearly signaling their disagreement. Um, a few hours ago, um, I got a email, private email, from Ger someone in Germany who sent me another interview by another German general, a General Kuyat, comes along, says, this is madness. Sending Leopards 2 tanks to Ukraine isn't going to achieve anything. It's just going to mean that you're going to lose lots and lots of tanks. We have the same thing being said in Britain about the Challenger 2's article about it in the Daily Telegraph. There was an American general, ex-general. These are all ex-generals, but, you know, they're obviously in touch with the military people. He went on an interview, I think it was with CNN, actually. He said, look, you, there just aren't the numbers of tanks available to send them in time. And if you did send them, I mean, it would take a year for the Ukrainians to learn how to use them. It's not going to make a difference now. But nobody pays any attention. Nobody wants to face the realities in Donbass. Nobody wants to talk about the real military situation. It's this Russian reality, flight from reality, send weapons to Ukraine. We have this meeting tomorrow in Ramstein. They're all <laughs> sending, uh, you know, getting rid of all their weapons, as you absolutely correctly said. The British military has said, even for, we can't even spare 14 tanks because our tank numbers are so low now. So what are you doing? But they're going to do it because realistically, they're losing their minds in exactly the way you said. Yeah, cleverly said that they're not, not, they're not only going to send uh, Challenger 2 tanks, but he said they're now going to send 200 armored vehicles as well. And, and he's proud of it. I mean, it's oh, almost it's it's like a, a, a pissing contest. I can't think of yes. other words like how much can you send? I can send more. But there's there's parts that are holding them back because they just don't have it to send. I mean, there's parts of their of, of their uh, military, which is telling them you don't have 100 Challenger tanks. So he's like, well, you know, Sunak, cleverly, they're like, well, we'll send 14 and we'll send 200 armored vehicles. So when we go yes. to, uh, to Germany, yes. we, can, we can sit at the table and say, look what we sent. And Estonia yes. saying, well, look what we sent. This is, they, they really have lost their uh, all yeah, sense absolutely. of reality. And they gave speeches at, at the WEF, all these, these puppet leaders, and they talked about how Russia is going to lose and Russia needs to lose and we're going to defeat Russia and Ukraine's going to win. That it leaves you speechless to think that these people, I mean, these people have intel as to what's going on, the real situation, do they? Are, are, they, are they being consulted properly or, or are they also being left in the dark and are they relying on, uh, on BBC and, and CNN to get their, uh, their info? It's, I can't believe that prime ministers and presidents of, of European nations, they, they're either incredible liars or they're they're being given information that is completely false. Well, we see that one of them. Yes. Well, we see that President Zelensky's not been given false information, and we get reports now. And as I said, I believe them. I mean, there's, it, it's been corroborated by too many sources now. He's been told by Zelensky what the actual situation on the ground is, and I'm sure that there are still some people <laughs> in the intelligence communities of the West who are able to provide actual, real, on-the-spot information about what's going on. And I'm sure that they're explaining that the situation in Bakhmut and in Sibersk and all of these places is every bit as catastrophic as we've been saying. But the problem is, if you've got leaders who simply don't want to listen and who are absolutely determined to get into this pissing gold test, which I think is a brilliant metaphor, by the way. I think that is exactly what it is. As I said, 14 tanks, 14 Challenger 2 tanks. They're not going to achieve anything. Nobody thinks they are. Uh, the only thing they're going to do is complicate 
Ukraine's already overstretched logistics. So you send a 100 bulldog armored vehicles or whatever it is. Well, this is a tracked vehicle that dates from the 60s. It's not even, I mean, it, it, it's, it's been phased out by the British military. It's not a vehicle anywhere you use in combat, but it's a track vehicle. It looks like a tank, so you send it instead. You have the Americans. You have a bizarre argument between Schultz and Biden. So Schultz comes along and says to Biden, I'm only going to send my Leopard 2s if you're going to send your Abrams tanks. And Biden comes back. No, I'm not going to send my Abrams tanks. You must send your Leopard 2s. I mean, it's already very weird. And then the Poles today come out and say, well, doesn't matter what the Germans say. We're going to send our Leopard 2s to uh, Ukraine, even if the Germans tell us not to. So, I mean, you know, they're all ganging up on the Germans to get them to send their Leopard 2s. And um, Poland has already sent all its old Soviet tanks, which had been refurbished. And by the way, many of them built in Poland. So it doesn't have those tanks. It's going to send all its Leopard 2s as well. It's increasing the size of its army at the same time. But with what weapons? Well, it's going to buy tanks from South Korea, except those tanks haven't been built yet. <laughs> Same with the Abrams tanks. Poland's going to buy Abrams tanks from the US, but those haven't been built yet. They won't be delivered for years. But, you know, we don't worry about that. We strip our arsenals in the Middle East. So the US has now apparently gone to Israel. Three, there was a stockpile of 300,000 um, 155 millimeter shells in Israel. That was intended so that if the US had to send a force to the Middle East in a hurry, or if Israel you know, needed to get involved in a war, there would be a stockpile of shells it could use. But you know, forget, about, forget all about that. You know, we're not worried about that anymore. You know, it might be a war with Iran or a conflict with in Syria. Or Syria or wherever. You never know what might happen in the Middle East. But you don't worry about that anymore. You send all those shells to Ukraine. And of course, what happens? They all get burnt up in Ukraine. And these generals I was talking about, the American general who was, I think, on CNN, I don't remember his name, General Kuya, doing this report, uh, this, giving this interview. And he was, by the way, at one point, the chair of the NATO Ukraine Defense Council. So he knows what he's talking about. Um, another German general, General Vad, all sorts of British generals talking from, you know, behind the scenes. They're telling everybody, this is mad. This is madness. But you don't pay any attention. You just go ahead and do it because you can't be seen not to. If anybody doesn't provide their tanks, their armored vehicles, their things like that, well, um, they're going to lose face in front of the others. So everybody has to rush and provide these weapon systems. You don't listen to the experts. You don't listen to the intelligence people. You just make decisions in this bizarre way. It's a flight from reality, the like of which I've never seen. Yeah, they're like high school uh, children. But um, the... The latest news is that uh, that France is now um, considering sending tanks as well. And the reason they yeah. want to send the tanks is uh, the, the Leclerc, Leclerc yeah. tanks. And the reason they want to send these tanks is so that they can help, help, so that they can push Germany to overcome the reluctance that they have with uh, sending the, the Leopards. This is according to, to a report from from Politico, why are they so fixated on escalating with Russia via Germany? It seems like that's the fixation of Poland, that's the fixation of Estonia, of Lithuania, of the United States, of France. Every country is fixated on not delivering their leopards, but they have to make sure that Germany also delivers the leopards and Germany also delivers weapons. Is this Another way of, of of severing Germany from Russia again by saying, you know, we've 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 deindustrialized Germany, uh, and Olaf Scholz is proud now because he says that Germany's not going to be in a recession. And probably another video for another time. But we've we've destroyed the German economy, we've destroyed Nord Stream. 
let's just go for the kill shot now, yeah. which is which is to to have German tanks fighting uh, Russian Russian troops, and that should be the final nail in the coffin of any type of uh, German Russian uh, rapprochement in the next one hundred years. I, I mean, it's it. They're so fixated yes. on Germany. Yes. It's, that, that's I what mean, is it, really strange. And Germany's trying to push back. You can see they're trying to find excuses not to send their leopards, but they're going to have to. That's why yes. my, my opinion is they're oh, going no, to, I, but you can I, see I, they don't I, want to because I, I think I there know, are people yeah. in the German military that understand this is this – is, we're going to be crossing another big yeah. red line with yeah. Russia. I mean, this is the story that Germany, I mean, this is the trap that Germany fell into last year. I mean, every single red line Germany sought to establish in terms of what it would do and what it would not do has been crossed up to now. They said that they wouldn't disconnect Russian banks from SWIFT. They went along with that. They said that they wouldn't freeze <laughs> Russian central bank reserves, apparently, but they did that. They agreed to the... Uh, export import bans on russian oil on the import bans on russian gas they've just gone along with everything they said that they wouldn't supply weapons at one time do you remember you know at one point they were only going to supply helmets <laughs> then you know it's gone all the way from helmets all the way to battle tanks and they're going to do that too and i i and you're absolutely right there is this constant prodding and pushing and threatening and jeering at the Germans to get them to do this. And I think partly the reason is that the rest of Europe doesn't trust them. And I think that's the, that is the reality on this. I mean, I say the rest of Europe, I mean, the French, the British, they don't, they feel isolated. Supporting Ukraine if Germany is not in some way involved and they are ultimately always nervous that if the Germans aren't pushed all the way, then the German German policy will, will change. German policy will turn. And that partly may be driven by opinion polls coming out of Germany now, which show that the German public is starting to turn against arms deliveries to Ukraine. Apparently, there was the, the idea of sending um, uh, Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine is unpopular in Germany. Most Germans who were polled opposed sending the Marder infantry fighting vehicles to Ukraine. So all of this is all of this is there. But I know I agree, and I mean I think it's interesting that France is sending is saying it's going to send its Leclerc tanks. There aren't that many of them, by the way. <laughs> I mean France has about I think four hundred in total. So, I um, mean, you know, they're not that many and they've been out of production for a long, long time. And um, so, you know, they're talking about sending their tanks. They were previously only going to send wheeled tanks, which nobody takes particularly seriously. But they're all now pushing, prodding the Germans to do this thing because, as I say, they don't trust the Germans. They think that at the end of the day, the Germans don't really have their heart in this thing any longer, apart from perhaps a few greens and um they're afraid that the germans might backtrack and they're probably also alarmed that all these german generals general vad and general kuyat are coming out now and saying that this is madness so i think this is partly what it's all about all right well uh, i guess we'll end it there all these people need like they're, they're like addicts and they need an intervention oh, yeah. because they're destroying yeah. their own countries, whether it's the U.S. or Germany or Poland or Finland, whatever. They, they need an intervention. Someone yeah. needs to intervene and to pull these people back. Well, they will. Yeah. I mean, what's going to happen eventually is that, you know, events in Ukraine will catch up with them. As I said, you can pretend that Solidar hasn't fallen. <laughs> but the fact is Solidar has fallen. I mean, you know, and sooner or later, you know, more and more of these places are going to fall. And, you know, it's all very... I mean, the other thing is just consider, I mean, you know, Leopard 2 tanks, Leclerc tanks, Challenger 2 tanks, Abrams perhaps, they're all different from each other. How is Ukraine going to integrate all of these things in, you know, record time, find means to use them? There was a very interesting article I read recently about how difficult it is to operate for a 
example, the Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle um, that, you know, Lebanon has been trying to learn how to use it for eight years and hasn't succeeded. Well, you know, maybe Ukrainians are better at this sort of thing. But, you know, it's difficult to see how they can u- learn to use all these weapon systems in the time in the time needed. But you don't pay any attention to that. You don't worry about logistics. You don't worry about everything. You have to rush, send everything you can. And of course, the one thing you cannot afford to do is to appear to in front of the others to be holding back. Because if you do that, one, they suspect you, and two, they gang up on you, and you lose face. And that's what they can't face doing with each other. Yeah. What Lavrov said to Russia 24 is, we will do everything to make our colleagues from NATO and the EU sober up as soon as possible. Well, indeed. Well, and just on that, is what they need. <laughs> yeah. on the yeah. topic of that, I understand Lavrov has been in Minsk. And as you correctly said, uh, um, Shoigu has been on the phone to the Belarus defense minister. Who knows? Maybe something's up there. I mean, I have no idea. But it does look as if a lot is going on on that particular front. Maybe. But um, for the moment, I think, you know, we, we're only... We can only be left guessing. The Russians have kept us all guessing in a masterly way. But the realities of the war are manifesting themselves clearly now in Bachman. Okay. Yeah. The Durant.locals.com. We are also on Rockfin. And go to the Durant shop. 10% off. Use the code. Good day. Take care.